what a person has to improve and increase is the love and the fear to Hashem. Not just love and not just fear. Love and fear must grow simultaneously, always at the same time. Growing your love to Hashem only is not good. Growing your fear to Hashem only is also not good. Growing your love and your fear together is like having a body and a soul together on the way up. That's very important. So, the Ramchal say, "Lagbir et ha'ava ve'ira leboro itbarach, sheyeh mitbonen al godel romemuto." You have to learn how great is Hashem. The more you read, the more you review the world, the more you see how Hashem runs the world, the more you are impressed and fall in love with Him more and more. That's increasing the love. When you look at the human being, how worthless he is without Hashem reviving him every second, then you know, who am I to even, that Hashem even care about someone like me, what I do or what I do not do. Surrender in front of Hashem. Always embarrass in front of Hashem how low I am and how high you are. I'm so ashamed that you even care about me. I'm so ashamed I'm bothering you to clean my mess. I'm so ashamed I'm only asking and asking and asking and doing nothing in return. A person will desire to be a servant of Hashem. To praise Him. To publish His glory. These are the things that makes a person being attached to Hashem. I will repeat. How do you become a magnet with Hashem and see big light in your life? One, first surrender. I'm nothing. I'm dust. He is the highest and I'm the lowest. I'm ashamed that he has to bother messing with my mess, cleaning my mess. How wonderful he runs and feeds the whole world. How much he gave me. How much he helped me. How... Wonderful is his creation. How can I publish his greatness and glory to the rest of the world? These are the things that purify your soul. What's affecting the world and our life more? Transactions over here or transactions that happens over there? What does it mean it goes both ways? Very good. Let's uh, elaborate. Everything you see in, the, in this world comes from the upper world. But what affects the upper world is what we do in this world. So it's a two-way street. i give you an example. Scientists now found a way to make local rain. They do certain things in the ocean. They make water goes up with certain uh, chemicals and the steam goes up, create clouds, and the next day you have rain. They have ways to do it. Or airplanes spread certain things by the clouds, it creates rain. Things that we do over here affecting the upper world, and the upper world affecting the lower world, etc. It's a cycle. What a person does by keeping Torah and mitzvot and learning Torah and becoming holy, is affecting the decisions that are made for his future. Will he have kids? Will he not have kids? Will he get married? Will he not get married? Will he get married to someone good or to someone horrible? Will he be mentally sick? Will he be mentally cured? Will he have parnasa? Will he have not have parnasa? So many of the things that we are doing immediately reflects in the upper world and reflects back to our life and make a change for the better or for the worse. For the better or for the world. And the Ramchal writes, and we'll finish right here, and it says like this, according to this root, the beginning of everything is in the upper world, 
And the end of the process is in a lower world, our world. Everything that is renewed, renewed first over here, and later we see the consequences of it over here. But there's one detail that is an exception to the rule. is the will of the human being. Everything is set and predetermined. The way Hashem runs the world with the, with the laws of nature and the laws of the upper world. What affect the whole system is the free will of the human being. If he will choose to do wonderful things or horrible things. According to that, everything will readjust. Just like when you drive with the GPS, you are in charge of the wheel, where the car is going to go. Based on that, the re GPS adjusts. If you go in the right direction, it doesn't need to adjust. If you made a mistake, the GPS future is all changing accordingly. Same thing over here. When you do the right thing, it changes everything that's coming to you. Every transaction that you choose to do for good or for bad will affect your future for good or for bad. Everything measure for measure. Mida can neged mida. If you ask, so how come babies who didn't do anything die or become sick or born sick or born with the birth defect? How is it possible? They didn't do anything in this world to reflect in the upper world that they should suffer. The answer they did, but not in this reincarnation, in their past life. In the last life, they did some things they were not supposed to do. The reflect, reflection of what they did in the upper world comes back as a boomerang. When the soul comes back to a new body, the soul is being affected by the things that a person did in his past life. For instance, he was married three times and beat up every one of his wife, destroyed their life, abused her. Now he gets reborn as a baby. When he's 20, he begins to date. He went on a thousand dates. Nobody wants him. Always, in the last minute, the, the shidduch breaks. He doesn't understand what's going on. Ugly people get married, and this Mr. Handsome not. Poor people get married, and Mr. Rich Man is not. Stupid people get married, and this brilliant guy is not. He doesn't understand. He comes to the rabbi every week to cry. Do you find any problem by me? No. So why can't I get married? Look at this guy. Look at this one. Why? He's better than me. Why? Why Nazis get married? Why Arab Hamas terrorists, filthy murderers are getting married? Why I'm not getting married? I'm worse than them? We have millions of questions like this that people ask. They deserve to have kids and I don't deserve to have kids? The answer is you do not see your entire picture. You only see the last few years. You don't know who, what you did in your past life. Maybe you broke a shidduch between a couple and thanks to you, to your stupid choices, you destroyed the family. Maybe you made some children go off the way and become wicked and Hashem is very angry at you. It could be so many things. But definitely, now one thing that happens to you is random. That's the concept of entire life. The entire Judaism is depend on that. That everything that happens is Hashem's will. And His will is made based on our will and our actions. And there are hundreds of verses like this in the Torah. You're going to listen to me and follow my Torah and mitzvot, that's what you're going to get. And if not, that's what you're going to get. And that's how it's always been. Wicked people getting very angry when you tell them that their children born with this problem from past life. They know that they don't understand the concept of reincarnation. They, don't, they know they have no knowledge about the past life of their child. But they get angry at the rabbi when he speaks about it, even though he reads it from the books. Why? Because they are full of ego. Ego make you blind. You cannot surrender to your creator. You don't want to have a boss tell you what to do and what's right and what's wrong and if you deserve it or you don't deserve it. Ego make people make a lot of stupid things. How many people lost their entire life because of one hour of ego? Usually in divorce cases you see it. Stupid. Stupid argument, stupid argument about certain things. So the Ramchal says, a person with his speech and his 
actions influence the upper world. Even when he thought a Jew can affect the world, even in the next world, the upper world, even with his thoughts. Not only with his actions and not only with his speech. There are three different levels. Thoughts is the lowest one. Speech is higher. And actions is even higher. So every time you think positive, meaning not filthy things and dirty things in your mind, you purify your mind, you have emuna, you have faith, you think about God, you think about Torah, it creates wonderful energy up there. You think about stupid movies and curses and violence and rap music and tattoos and all kinds of prostitution. It creates horrible effects in the upper world for your life and for your entire environment. That's why Hashem wiped out all the people of Sodom and the Babylonian Tower and the, the, the generation of the flood. Why Hashem wiped out so many millions of people? Because they were all wicked and only negative was created by them until the place had no right to exist. And that's where Hashem drowned the whole world, like a mikveh, purified the whole thing from the horrible effect and started a new world.